Hi, this is Rob Simone here on Resonance FM. You are invited to come along for the ride. The UK's only full-time alternative information program. Join us for this weekly journey of discovery here on Resonance FM 104.4. Yes, welcome back to the program here on Resonance FM 104.4 on your FM dial. And of course, worldwide on the internet at robsimone.com. This is a very special show. As many of you know, I try to bring you the information that goes beyond what you would normally hear on the airwaves, on the radio, on your television. And today we have a very powerful message that comes right from the heart of the Hopi people, the Hopi Reservation, Shimopavi Village, which is the mother village of all the villages in Hopi. Now, a lot of people are familiar with the Hopi, but... But this program will bring you a whole new understanding of the origins of the Hopi people and how they have been chosen to be the caretakers of this earth. And what threatens them right now is pending legislation in the form of SB, Senate Bill 2109, and in essence, it is the government trying to take away their aboriginal water rights. The water that has sustained them for thousands of years. The water that is at the core of their religious ceremonies. It is the lifeblood of the Hopi people. And they stand now to not only lose their claim to the water, but their entire way of life. And what that could mean for the rest of the world is we would no longer have the caretakers, the, the ones that are in direct connection and always have been with the earth, sustaining a balance outside of the knowledge of the people of the world. They have been doing this quietly as part of the dedication, as part of their commitment, as part of their service, part of their original creation story. We're going to hear from one of the elders, the snake chief priest, who will talk about the importance of the water and talk about his elders who told him long ago that this would happen and that these things that were spoken to him are now coming true and what that means for the rest of the world. This is a very important program. And at the end of the interview, we're going to give you numbers, phone numbers, emails, and information to contact lawmakers so that we as a people can have a voice in what could be the first step in a war against our water, a war against the life force that should be part of everyone's rights. And it seems now that this war is starting with the Hopi. It has been bubbling up for a long time, but now it is critical that you hear with an open heart this message because time is of the essence. There is legislation being pushed through, and they are seeking a voice. Take a listen to this and do your best to get involved. All right, welcome back to the program. We're here in Hopi talking with Rafford Gohmahoniwa, who is the snake priest chief and the clan chief of the sun, the sun forehead, and eagle. He is the spokesperson for the highest religious priests of Shimopavi village and the following religious leaders. Uh, Radford, welcome to the program. Thank you. And we are here talking because there is a lot going on in Hopi these days. And you have decided to come forward uh, as your role to speak on uh, several different issues. 
Is it safe to say that this is one of the first times you have come forward to speak? Yes, I have been working with the leaders and it is time that they, the leaders, says that we must go out to the public more than before. We have been getting more issues and more things that are against our culture. And so it is time that we, the leaders at Sangopavi, come out with our interests in different things to make the balance with the world. For people who want to get an understanding of what your role is in Hopi, can you sort of tell me what that is? Well, one of the major roles is that <clears throat> I am the snake chief, the priest chief, and also the war chief, and also the clan chief, and I'm also the spokesperson for the the highest religious priest and its following leaders. And so with, with all that, I am also um, the spokesperson that needs to speak out to the people. And it is at the desire of the leaders that we start going out to the people and giving out information of what is happening with Hopi. So going back to the snake priest leadership, I, I, I go through the whole ceremony in the summer uh, every two years and conduct the ceremony and then along with that I also conduct the um, war, war priest uh, position however at this time because we are Hopi and Hopi to, is to be a subtle person. We don't rage in wars, but in the previous times we had to defend. And so that was the uh, position that my elders in my clan held. And it is not to make war against other people, but only at the time to defend. We have other during the time of migrations, we have Apaches, we had Navajo, we have Utes, and we have other people coming, and every one of them had to face us. And it was always like um, trying to um, take over the Hopi. And so at that point, then the leaders decided that we got to have a war chief or somebody that will be responsible to to um, face the enemy or face these people that are encroaching on, on Hopi. So at that time then it was developed or it was um, decided that the leaders will have to have a war chief who would be the first person to contact for protection. And that's that's the position that I hold now. As far as the clanship position, I talk for my clan. If there is um, anything that I mentioned in the responsibility, I inform I are, or call upon my man folks, my nephews, my uncles of the clan, and tell them what it needs to be done. And this is during the Hopi ceremonies and also during religious activities and also in common everyday situations that we are contacted for help. And that's, that's part of the village issues. Then I also am the spokesperson for the highest priest in the village of Shungopavi is called Kikamongwe. And also the spokespersons for the following leaders, religious leaders of Singopavi. 
that's where I talk for people, talk to people, information that is coming from the leaders. The leaders tell me what to tell the people. That I carry on to the people. Well, for people who may not know, who are the Hopi? Hopi, as we know it, and as we say, are the first people here on this earth. We believe that we have emerged from the underworld. And before coming to the, this world, there was chaos in the underworld. There was people, but they, are, they did not respect the religious part of the Hopi as well as the civil side of the Hopi. And there was a lot of problems, issues, coercions, um, um, disrespect. And so there were a few that, of the leaders that were concerned. And it is a life that is just all in chaos. Nobody respects anyone. This is what the leaders had been seeing and decided that they got to get out of that situation. And so they decided that the, they'd been hearing some footsteps out in the heavens and they feel or they think that somebody must be up there. And so they all decided secretly to make a way to come up to the upper world. So they had, of course, in our Hopi way, we have uh, ceremonies. Everything has to be dealt with, deal with singing, m sort of magical form uh, to bring something about, to make a change. There's always singing involved in prayers. And this has been made, and so they had um, used many animals that can fly. They could carry our message, so they tried different birds to fly up into the sky and find out if there's any anybody up there. The animals didn't, the birds didn't reach the sky. And so they thought and thought, and they decided that there's got to be a plant of some sort that grows like pines, spruce, trees that could grow and grow. And so they had tried those, but none of them reached again. So the other thing that they thought about was a bamboo. So they used a bamboo, and they do the ceremony again, the ritual of bringing that bamboo up, and that was the one that came up to to uh, to this place. Then after that, then they had to send someone up to to find out who it is that's up here, that's walking up in the sky. So they used again birds, and big birds like eagle, the swift birds like um, swift swallows, um, different kinds of birds. And the one that really came up was the mockingbird. And the mockingbird flew up. They were asked if he could do that message for us or do that um, for the people. So he came up and reached up to the top and found out there was somebody here. And so they used that information and started to keep the bamboo and they collected some people, of uh, people that were still sane, sort of. They weren't coerced or weren't corrupted or were still following the Hopi priest. So they collected those people and they started climbing each one in the, you know how bamboo is, there's a little uh, space in between the joints of a bamboo. And that's how they were going through the bamboo and climbing up and up and up and somehow got to this world. 
get to this place, the one we are at now. And so when they got there, everybody got up, and then there was someone here. But he won't show his face. And so he was told them that he was the person that they, or being that they hurt walking up here. They came up and asked them this thing that uh, if they would come up and leave with 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 this uh, thing. And the response was that, yes, if you really want to leave the way I live, I only have a planting stick. I have only grains of corn, seeds, many seeds, and I have water jug. Meaning that you have to work. You have to work to f make your own food and you have, to, you have to depend on the water. And so I guess our leadership, the leader says, yes, we will do that. And it also was mentioned to them that they will have to also take care of, the, of this place, the world. Meaning that they'll have to respect everything that's here. Animal life, the plant life, the land forms, things that are here to enjoy. And so they all agreed. The other thing that they were told us is that once you come over here, if you want to leave with leave the way I do, there will be no fighting. You cannot have any kind of evil feelings against another person. From that, they will. He was. He named the people you will be Hopi people. So Hopi was the name that we are using now to mean that you cannot harm anyone or anything. You have to be uh, respectful, you have to be polite in, in everything that's here. Just keeping the nature the way it is. And from there, we began to learn that in our ceremonies, in our religious activities, we are given that name. And so in our, in our religious activities, we initiate the young ones and we tell them that you are now Hopi. And so from there, we use that word Hopi to mean what I just said, to be respectful to all things, all living things, human beings, plant, animals, even the tiniest little insects, is what we are to be. You, uh, you mentioned uh, the land. Can you tell us a little bit about the land that the Hopi have been on? how it's, uh, it's sort of tied in to the uh, uh, Hopi culture. Once we got up here to this land, I call it land now, and um, we were told, our leaders were told, that you're going to go around. And once the people roam around, and they'll find all kinds of things in the in, in this world. Meaning that there'll be forest lands, that there'll be rivers and lakes, there'll be mountains, there'll be ice, ice land, there'll be deserts. And as you walk around, as you travel around, migrate around, some of you people will, will tend to like certain areas. Some will want to settle in the forest areas. Some will like to settle in the 
waters where there's lakes and where there's a lot of um, uh, rivers. Some of you will tend to like the barren lands and ice lands. Some people will tend to like the areas of desert. You will keep migrating. I will select the people that comes to the area where they will be isolated and they have to work for what they want. It will be a little bits of these things that I mentioned. Little bits of desert, little bits of forest, little bits of water, little bits of ice, little bit of um, different elements. So at that point, if I see a group not not um, um, obsessed with uh, certain kinds of land and keep migrating and happen to be at the right point that is of all kinds of uh, that I mentioned all kinds of um, landforms I will show a star, morning star and when you see that then that group of people or all groups of people will end their migrations and whoever's in that um, area they will be the Hopi they will be the ones to make the balance of all the all the world they will be the ones to have responsibility spiritually and also culturally and also I guess manually to make this world the way it is that's how we got to this place we are in the semi-desert semi area. We have uh, bits of forest. We have bits of desert areas. We have bits of uh, snow. Not much of ice, but of snow. All of that areas that I mentioned is here. All of that we have here, and that should provide us all of our ways of life all of that will be part of your religion all of the things that you do in Hopi religion will be from these elements that we just mentioned you will be responsible for not only your people but all the human life in this world you will be responsible for all the animal life in this world. You will be responsible for making of the water. You will have the part to make rain. And that's not only for Hopi, but for the whole world. You will be the main people to make sure that the nature stays the way it is. That's how we are today. That's how we want to be today. Of course, there was also a, a saying about the way things will change. If you have a good heart, if you maintain what I have mentioned to you, you will have good life all the time. But if you deviate from my instructions, things will happen which may be good, which may not be good in different areas in the world. So, if you carry out my instructions, everything in the world should be the way for all the people, all the animal kingdom and plants and so forth. So, to this day, that's what we do in our, in our religious ceremonies work with the work with what we have here pray for all the people 
in the world. Pray for all the animals in this world to make sure they they succeed from year to year. That's what we are and called Hopi. We respect all the things that I mentioned. That's our respect to everything, even the tiniest little insect. We still need water for the for those little insects. And that's what Hopi is. You just described this as the beginning mm-hmm. of Hopi and you have carried it ever since mm-hmm. the creation mm-hmm. of your peoples. Mm-hmm. But I noticed also there was a warning mm-hmm. that you mentioned uh-huh. by this, would you say, being? Right, right. Could you tell us a little bit about that? The responsibility that um, today, let me go back. Today we call this thing that we met is the, is the spirit, is the great spirit. With his instructions, we have accepted his instructions. And so, like I mentioned, that things will interrupt the process of life in this world. You'll, you'll get in good things, bad things. But the good things would be short time. Bad things, well, you have to work on it to, to get out of the situation. And you have everything in your uh, religious activities and your culture that you should you should be able to overcome whatever the situation is. And most of that is the prayers. I'll be here, I'll hear you, and if it's a good intention, if it's for everybody, if the whole thing in the world, I will always be there for you. That's the instructions we have. So, Issues that come up, we have to talk about it, try to do the best thing that we can to overcome whatever it is. If we don't, your world, you make this world almost the same as the down below. Chaos will continue if, if you don't, if you don't confront this, whatever it is. So it's your responsibility to, to keep this world going. You have to be the ones to inform other people. And the only people at that time that we knew was the Hopi people. But now as time went on, we find that, oh yeah, there are some people that stayed in the forest lands. Oh yeah, there were people some that stayed in the ice lands. Oh yeah, some people stayed in deserts, other places. So now, yeah, we have to inform those people out there because we are the same people. As we came up, we became Hopi, so those people out there are Hopi. This is why we have to do something about situations. There are elements that um, that will happen, like you were asking, is that what will happen? Well, nature will re- respond. And we are seeing it now. Great big rivers, great big rains, earthquake, hurricanes, volcanoes. That's the power of the the earth itself. They will start to come alive if we, the people, should start to not, not help the nature. We misuse the nature. We misuse the elements that are in the world for goodness. If we if we misuse or 
don't pay attention to it and go beyond our way of life that's good, then nature is going to have to do its what it has to do. This, of course, brings us to, uh, to talk about some of the struggles that are, that are happening now in the world, but with the Hopi especially, there is such an emphasis on water. It is something that, as desert farmers, I would imagine almost your, the whole consciousness sort of revolves around. And one of the reasons, obviously, that you're uh, talking now, can you tell us a little bit about what's happening with this issue that faces the Hopi people now? in regards to their water. When I was small, um, well, I, I was a teenager, and, and I, 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 I think I found my place. And my uncles are the ones that have been talking to me, and, and it's the Hopi way that you learn from your uncles. Uncles know your clan responsibilities and what you are supposed to be doing for the people. And so my uncles were the ones that had been telling me about what what was gonna what was gonna be if we don't follow our own ways of life, hope your way of life. You will be having people, other people, even though we call them Hopi, they will get greedy. And they will they will come among you. The the, the true Hopi. And they will try to overtake and try to destroy the Hopi way of life. So I was thinking about that all this time and finally figure out is, is that these people are the outside, the Hopi people. Some of them are aggressive people and they want to take over the world they get greedy of certain things and how my uncle uh, explained it to me is people will come, they will take look over the lands and then they say, oh, that's what we want and they said, they'll come in they'll enclose you into the area and you will only be in this area, you cannot go any be any further beyond what area. People will surround you and that's gonna make the Hopi people have limited space. They cannot go anywhere else. People will get greedy. They will want more land. They will want more minerals. They'll be wanting more of this and that. And I think that's what I I think is happening now. People are growing. There are people, more people outside than the Hopi people. The population is increasing faster than Hopi. And so now people are out there and they have forgotten the Hopi way and they have gone into arguments they want more of this they want more of this land they want more of this and that includes the the water which is the life on this earth and my uncle told tells me was that the last thing that they're going to take away from you is the land and the water and so in my time the land that we are on is is not called Hopi land. It's called a reservation. And who put us there? The people that got greedy. They want all the land for themselves. Outside people of Hopi. We had been offered five million dollars to the from the government. United States government saying that this five million dollars is an agreement about the land that they have made an agreement 
if you accept this five million dollars, the Hopi will never ever ask for land. They will have no rights to any land. You are going to be in a re reserve. And especially uh, the old people don't understand what that means. Elders didn't know what that means. And so as time went on, you know, we have uh, people, some outside people knew what that agreement meant. And now most of the elders understood that we have already, the land has already been taken away from us. If it hadn't been, we would still call it a Hopi land. But now we call it a reserve or a reservation. We are only here, we don't know for how long. That's what's going to happen. And so that $5 million was, was um, for that settlement. And in it, it says that if we accept that $5 million, then hope you will never ever ask the government for any land. And the way they covered it was that the five million is for the bad things they did to the Native Americans and the Hopi. That's how they covered it. Reparations? Yes. So, we know it, I know it, that we have already I believe that the tribal council, Hopi tribal council, have already accepted the $5 million. So that means we have already lost our land. Now, the next thing that my uncle told me is that the next thing, that, the other thing that's going to be um, taken away, and that's water. And I was, I, it just popped into my mind right away that when he that told me that, and what's happening now that just pop right up. Now we have the issue of having the Colorado River and the small basin on the uh, southern end of um, the Arizona. And all the water that's going to be um, coming from the rain that means washes, gullies, and other uh, runoffs we may not claim anymore and that's this water situation that has has now the issue for for the Hopi people that's the last thing that's going that we're going to have given have taken away from us because water is the life for everything on this earth. And we are supposed to maintain that water, all the elements in the world for every living thing. So we as Hopi people now are the dilemma, dilemma where we don't know what to do. Water is life to every living thing on, on this earth. And we as Hopi are responsible for praying for people to get rain, to get water, even into the ground, that the water seeps down into the ground as, as um, basins or reserves that in, during the, the rains we can always get it back from the ground. Those are the things that we will have no rights to anymore with this problem of water. And the water, the situation is that we will no longer have any rights to springs, wash-offs, the washes, the lakes, the use of the Colorado River. And if that happens, there will be no Hopi culture. There will be no Hopi people. We will be just common people, just like people from other countries that came to America, just a common people. 
we will lose everything that we had. We will lose everything. There will be no Hopi culture, no Hopi way of life. We will be just common people, servants to the United States government. This uh, issue, it was foretold to you. Mm -hmm. And how is it that it's happening now? Do you think that uh, there are larger reasons? Or is it just greed on behalf of the government of the United States? My thinking is that it is, it is based on, again, the um, greediness. I'll agree to that. It's a greediness. They want more of this. They want more of that. And in return, we're not getting anything. When we got to this land, we were given this land from the, from the Spirit, the Great Spirit. And so that's why we keep saying this is Hopi land. Way away from the beginning of time. We get this land here and that's why we call this Hopi land. But now, other people have not, have forgotten who they are. And they are the ones that are, are getting greedy trying to get more of this and more of that. And so there are wars amongst each other's power is, is what's happening now. And the more land you have, the more power you have. We could see it on television now. What's happening? Killing and destroying it's all again for power it's just um, something that I know and I don't know if the other people Hopi people knew about this what I just talked to you about is that those two are the, the last things that are going to be taken from my uncle so now I'm kind of picking up on what he was talking about. So this is what he's talking about. This is, there are so many things that he talked to me about, about what's going to happen. And that's, that's coming about. It's being real now. It's, to me, what he was telling me is not uh, prophecies. It's just, it's just, it's going to happen. And you need to be ready for it. It's what he was actually telling me. So the issue now is that we are going to lose our rights to, to water here in, in Hopi land. Well, if this does happen, of course that spells possible uh, disaster for the people in Hopi land. But I have a sense also that there's a larger meaning for the people on the earth, given the, the, the Hopi's role in kind of the, the caretakers what does that mean for people listening who are in different places in the country? That is, is something that um, is something big, something that people must understand. Because like I, in the beginning I said, we are all Hopi. And we need to tend to the nature and be part of nature. And that's what the people out out there are forgetting. They're taking things out of the earth. Minerals is what I'm talking about. And using it for different things that are is not a way for a life. Oil is taken out, uranium is taken out, gold and all kinds of elements have been taken out. But it's not for everybody. It's only for certain people or a certain type of people. That's not supposed to happen with Hopi. To Hopi it was said that when things change, 
if nature its own self changes and we need to go along with the change, that's when we will need to go to these elements that are in the ground. That's the time to to go to the what is underneath that is reserved for, for our use and not for for power but for the goodness of the of life on this world. That's why it's reserved under there is what I was told. And so other people should be aware of, of these things. They should be because I keep saying that they are Hopi and they must learn again, relearn the nature and be part of nature and try to preserve the the way it is. That's the only way we can have a good good life in, in this world and that's that's how I see what's happening in this in this world there, I think there are reasons there are uh, that people who are listening uh, should understand that how this water affects the Hopi it also then affects the world in some sense according to the instructions from the Great Spirit uh-huh. would that be safe to say? Mm-hmm. I think so because we as at Hopi is the last that will have that will be on earth to really really make a difference for the rest of the world this is from the instruction from Masa our great spirit and if anything that happens to to Hopi then it's going to affect the whole world that's why our instructions is that you must keep the Hopi way of life alive. You have to have Hopi to 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 um, make the world a good world, a peaceful world. So that's that's I guess is what what we need to do as Hopi people and to bring this out to the to the world is what we're trying to do here is for the rest of the people in the world not only for Hopi if Hopi goes the rest of the world will go too well what can people do you're looking for a voice where is the intersection where people can can come in and channel their their help and their uh, their efforts one of the ways that uh, the leaders have uh, asked is that we need people all people we need their help in a way of letting our government know that the government the United States government not have this bill happen. SB 2109. That's the bill that's already in the in Congress. We want the Hopi people, at least the leaders from Sangopa, we wanted people to call or to send letters or to let know their congressmen or the government if to know that this bill is not good that bill must not go through it's going to affect all the people in this world so that's what we are asking people is make telephone calls mail email whatever it is asking the council the the um, Congress pass this bill. That's what we're asking from the people. Also, I, I would imagine it could start a precedent. If they do it to Hopi, who might be next? That's a good question. Who's going to be next? 
Yeah. Like I keep saying, the whole world is going to be affected. It could be any people in the, in the world. We need people to make their voices in support to the Congress, United States Congress. Even to the president. I would, I would want the president to know what is happening with the Congress. It seems this bill is, it, it, when people look at it, that it's disguised. Do you get a sense of how they're they're taking away something but offering something else in the hopes that it will be accepted? Yes, there is. Like I mentioned earlier, what my uncle said is that they'll take this from Hopi. In return, it'll be less value, is what he says. Whatever, whatever the government takes from Hopi, in return, it'll be less value, is how he put it. I think this is what, what's, what's going to happen. Do you think there's something going on that the American people don't know about? This interest in water? All of a sudden, that seems to be happening. Do you think it speaks to more changes in the earth? I believe so. I believe it's something that's that's uh, the the main nutrient to life is being taken away from from this from this world, and nothing in return to make the life better. Well, I, of course, encourage people to get involved and to uh, contact as many people as they can about this. This is a message that I know will go far and wide, not only to people's minds, but also to people's hearts. Is there anything else you'd like to say in closing? As a Hopi person, and as a spokesperson for the village of Shungopavi, I would like to have all people to contact the Congress and give them their thoughts about what our, our problem is. Support is what I'm asking for. The heart of the people for the Hopi way of life. In the matter of universal life, to pray, to pray for the end of this issue. The issue should not be, the bill should not be, it should not be passed. So that's why I'm talking to the people. Is there, is there support, prayers? And I'm sure that they will respond, given that this is uh, an issue, uh, not just for the Hopi, but for the sort of universal sovereignty. That's correct. Mm. Radford, uh, please say your name because I tried to say it once, but Radford Omahungniwa. You are the snake priest chief, the clan chief, the sun, the sun forehead, and the eagle, the spokesperson for the highest religious priest of uh, Shomopavi village and the following uh, religious leaders. I want to thank you so much for coming and talking, and we will be with you in spirit and in action. I also want to thank you for listening to to the Hopi and believing in what we are dealing with and to also help to bring this out to the rest of the world. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Star Talk FM with me, your host, Rob Simone, where I bring to you the most interesting people on the planet. Science, consciousness, personalities, you never know what you're going to hear next. Tune in and find out what all the buzz is about. 
Listen live on 104.4 FM or worldwide online at robsimone.com. Yes, as you just heard, this is a profoundly important issue that we are asking for your help. And in just a moment, I'm going to give you some phone numbers and some addresses and emails to get directly involved with the decision makers, the lawmakers, who you can send your voice out to let it be known that you do not agree and you do not want this SB 2109 bill to be passed. Now, as you're getting something to write with, I'm going to play you a few clips from next week's show. This is going to be part two of the Hopi elders talking about this, but in a more detailed way. You're going to get a different perspective. We're going to hear from Ronald Wadsworth and Leroy Lewis, who will talk about this with their own voice. Take a listen to a few clips from next week's show. And another thing I've also learned, um, the Little Colorado River is the second largest water reservoir, underground reservoir in the state. So if we wave our rights to the Little Colorado River, we've waved all the water, you know, and, and we would um, devastate the future of generations of Hopi people to come. What is the government offering in return? Tell us a little bit about the mechanics of this bill. What are they uh, hoping that you agree to? They want us to agree to uh, waive and hold harmless the United States government for any uh, injury to Hopi water rights or to the quality of the water and also to any of its um, employees, agencies, uh, now and forever. That's what they want us to, to agree to. But I have a sense the Hopi are looking at this from a much longer perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, the Hopi, Hopi leaders um, always look years, generations ahead, you know, because uh, I guess because of the, the prophecy, using that as a guide in the well-being of generations to come. If, if we address this in a proper way, we don't adopt this um, uh, bill, things, positive things, changes, you know, we can all work together. How has the traditional people worked with water throughout the ages? Hopi refers to, in our language, Samit Nangwa, Namit Nangwa. Samit Nangwa, it means working together. Namit Nangwa means the participants who all come together and work harmoniously. Now here is the contact information that you should write down and get in touch with these very important people on this issue, SB 2109. Tell them that you are against it. President Obama can be reached at www.whitehouse.gov. The phone number there, 202-456-1111. Or Secretary of the Interior, Ken Salazar. Website, www.doi.gov. Phone, 202-208-3100. Email, feedback at ios.doi.gov. Or Senator Kyle of Arizona. His website is kyl.senate.gov. Get in touch with them. Let them know that you are against this bill. The website for all of this information is traditionalhopi.org. That has all of the complete contact information. My name is Rob Simone. We'll see you next week for part two of this very important show. <laughs>